Hey, what's up and welcome back. In this video, I thought I would tell my story crossing the border from Kenya to Tanzania. Now, this trip was pretty eventful. So the plan was to leave from Mombasa after visiting Malindi on the coast, which was my previous video. I made my way back to Mombasa, Kenya's second largest city. And then I stayed there for a couple of nights, did some more editing, enjoyed the same Airbnb that I stayed at. And then I bought a shuttle bus ticket which was going to take me to the border, the Taveta border on the Kenyan side. It's called Holili on the Tanzanian side. And my final destination was to be Moshi, which is a town, small city on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. I couldn't find any bus companies that did the journey from Mombasa to Moshi. So I found a shuttle bus company instead by just walking around this busy area of Mombasa where there are lots of bus companies on the street and I got talking to the right people and then they showed me the shuttle that goes to the Taveta border. The plan would be to then cross the border and then find a way to get to my hotel later on. So the plan sounded good. I bought my ticket for the shuttle bus. It cost, I believe, 2,500 Kenyan shillings. It's like $20 or 16 pounds, something like that. Woke up bright and early before sunrise to make the journey to the border. And that was fine. Um, we stopped many times and there were people bringing lots of stuff on the shuttle. It was quite an eventful journey. It did take quite a while to reach the border. I mean, it was probably five or six hours. So that was all fine. And then they drop you off in Taveta town itself, which is still a few kilometers away from the actual border. So then I needed to get on someone's motorbike <laughs> with my bag on my back and he was wearing my smaller bag on his front while he was riding. Uh, so we made our way to the border. That was fine too. So two different modes of transportation and then reached the physical border. I had prepared a PCR test, which I did in one of the Mombasa hospitals, which you need to enter Tanzania. That may change soon though. Um, and then I also needed my Tanzania e-visa, which cost 50 US dollars too. For Tanzania, you also need a yellow fever vaccine. So you need evidence that you've had that. You need your little booklet or certificate. So anyway, I reach the land border crossing and I go through some security and then it comes to being stamped out of Kenya. Now, as far as I'm aware, the Kenyan e-visa is 90 days. Everywhere I've looked online, it says that it's valid for 90 days. So I got a little bit of a shock <laughs> when the immigration officer said, you have overstayed your visa. I had stayed in Kenya for 35 days and he said to me that my visa was only valid for 30 days, which was a complete surprise to me. And so then I explained to him that I thought the Kenyan e-visa was 90 days and if I had known that mine was only 30 days, I would have left on 29, I wouldn't have stayed for 35. And then he insisted that the visa was uh, 30 days, not 90. He said that the e-visa for some foreigners is 90 days, but yours, for you, it's only 30. And I said, how come mine is 30 when other people get granted 90? And then he said something like, the guy who <laughs> stamped you into Kenya only gave you 30. And I said, well, there's no evidence of that on my passport. How can you make that claim? I don't know if they had it on the electronic system or something. And the whole thing seemed very fishy, to be honest. And then I said, well, what's it gonna be? You know, we're kind of at a stalemate. And then he said, 
you have two options. You will either be fined and you have to pay a fine on the spot or you will be arrested. <laughs> so then I said to him, you know, how much is the fine? Because I knew that even if I argued that the e-visa was 90 days, he probably wasn't going to budge. He has the people of the office around him. It's a situation where I'm never gonna win. So you just have to play the rules that, that they're dictating because they're the ones in the position of power. So then the guy kind of like, doesn't even look sure how much he's going to find me. He doesn't know what the rules are. It seems like there are no written rules. It's just up to the discretion of the officer at that time. And he kind of goes, hmm, so you overstayed for five days. 100 US dollars. <laughs> he just kind of picked it out of thin air. Um, and I didn't have 100 US dollars on me, but thankfully I had some trusty pound sterling on me. I always travel with emergency cash in pound sterling, around like 250 pounds, 300 pounds. And it came in handy in this instance because I then said to the officer, can I pay you in British pounds because I don't have any US dollars. And I also didn't have any Kenyan shillings, by the way. He said yes. So I did the currency conversion. It was 75 pounds. I didn't have a five pound note. I only had tens and twenties. So I gave him 80 pounds and I said, look, this is worth more than a hundred dollars. This is the best I can give you. And he said, you know, okay. And uh, I was out of Kenya and I was through. <laughs> For the Kenyan e-visa, we all pay the same rate. A few days after me, I was speaking to one of my Kenyan friends who knew a German that had just arrived and I got them to ask him, how many days do you have in Kenya on your e-visa? And he said, I've got 90. And so if they are suddenly applying 30 days to one person and 90 to another, when we both paid the same amount of money to get our Kenyan e-visa in the first place through the same online application, then I'm starting to see faults in this system. The thing where it gets a little bit kind of subjective is it says up to 90 days. So I suppose you think you've got 90, but then suddenly if a border official decides he only wants to give you 45 or 50 or even 30 in my case. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Um, I usually talk about the positive stuff most of the time when I travel, but I think it's also important to talk about these experiences that we have. It's not all happiness and great moments, there's also moments where things don't go according to plan and I think that's what makes documenting my travels for a living interesting by showing and talking about um, the things that go wrong as well as the things that are great and there are so many great things about Kenya. I love the country, I really want to come back. I had an amazing time. The Maasai Mara is unbelievable, they have so many other national parks where you can do safaris. I'd love to go to Amboseli, Svao. I also want to visit Lake Victoria next time, visit Kasumu with my Kenyan name, Otieno. I need to go to my, <laughs> my homeland, which is by Lake Victoria. Um, I want to go to Lamu next time. So there's many reasons I'd love to return to Kenya. So diverse, I like the food, the people are friendly. It feels laid back apart from maybe Nairobi and old Mombasa, most of it's laid back. <laughs> I love Kenya, I really wanna come back. This experience hasn't put me off returning to Kenya. I could be in the wrong, but at the same time, I think it's important to mention the situation. I took a taxi from the border to Moshi, just found a guy who would take me. Uh, was pretty easy, there's taxis waiting there. I paid about 15 pounds to get there and it's about an hour or so's journey. Maybe I paid a little bit more than I should have done. I don't know the going rate, so I was happy to pay that much. And then from Moshi, picked up a SIM card, had some food, and then got picked up by my guest house, which took me from the center of Moshi up to the slopes of Kilimanjaro. And that journey was fascinating, going through the agricultural land that is so rich and fertile from the soil and making my way up higher through the slopes and villages and the dense, thick vegetation, coffee plants, banana plants, really 
beautiful scenery and then arriving at my guest house high up on the slopes i mean i think it was about one and a half thousand feet so the next video is going to be me exploring the kilimanjaro area my first video from tanzania i am very excited uh, to put that one out i think there's some good stuff in there i went on a hike and before i go one more thing my morocco trip has a couple more spaces at the early bird price, which is $200 cheaper than the regular price. So those last two spaces, once they fill out, we will then be going with the regular price. So there's two more spaces at the discounted rate to join me in Morocco for nine days in October this year. If you want to travel with me, the link is in the description. I'll also pin it to the top of the comments as well. That's all. So thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.